Uh, how do you kind of look back so far in your career, um, you know, to this point? And I know there's a lot more ahead for you, too, which is great because I'm a fan of your work. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think I'm always just trying to live fully in whatever I'm creating and trying to make things that I really care about, like that are anchored in characters who aren't abstract to me. They're like real characters that are. Hey, it's Jim Alexander with Re with Real Talker right up there. The neon sign, bright, bright, right, right, James. Good to see <laughs> I see. I I see it. It's a beautiful sign, by the way. I love neon. <laughs> Thanks. Well, you know, I had to stick out some way. You know, I got it all there with Velcro. It was a good Amazon purchase. You know, so it's paying off. Oh man, I wish I had one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you where to go and get it. It's very easy. <laughs> all right. Cool. Make. I mean, you know, you're you're probably gonna have a nice setup behind you too once this is a finished product. You know, <laughs> not the mysterious dark curtain room wherever you are right now. <laughs> it could be exactly. anywhere. Could be the magical set behind you. Who knows? <laughs> oh. James, the first thought I had watch this movie. I'm like, you must have kids, probably. You know, to be able to do that because otherwise, three, three oh, kids. Well, there you go. A single guy like me with no kids probably wouldn't know how to come up with a story where to make kids feel real too so in that way um I, i've seen plenty of your work prior this is different for sure what kind of inspired this because i think it's a it's a nice removal from different things you've done and it's you know you would think like as a as a father as, as a male you know like how do you put yourself in little girls kind of you know before even teenagehood sort of uh minds and stuff so i'm curious what was kind of the backstory about this yeah, I mean, you know, my my world is, um, I mean, it was actually a friend of mine pointed out to me recently, they were, who went to film school with me, they were like, you remember your thesis film was about a single mother and her daughter, Janine Garofalo and her daughter. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, I guess it was. I mean, I super, super tight with my sister and mom, my sister's older than me. And like, mm -hmm. most of the movies and books and music that I really love came from my older sister. And like, my first models for I think healthy like friendships were my sister. Um, so I grew up around that. And yeah, I have three kids. My wife works at a middle school, high school. So every year there's a whole new batch of 11 and 12 year olds coming into, into our lives and, and parents as well. And, um, you know, I think, you know, being a parent has really affected the way I, I look at stories. I mean, I've told stories about young people before it's back sure. right now and there's been kids right. in films or, or people that would maybe have kids, but maybe shouldn't like the characters in Smashed. Um, but um, you know, being a parent um, has made me acutely aware of like the representation of young people and stories that are anchored from the perspective of young people um, and hoping for better versions and, and also just really just being alive and participating in conversations with my kids about, you know, experiences that we're having that are common, you know, that are, um, but that where we feel them in different ways. Like, I mean, for my kids, the loss of having our cat die and then a week later, having their grandfather die um, and then having COVID happen, we're both experiencing those things, but we're experiencing them with different tools. Yeah. Um, and um, it doesn't make their experience less than it doesn't make it naive. It's just part of what it is, you know, um, to be to be that age. And I mean, the real hope was to dignify, a, a, you know, a, that time in someone's life and the emotional experience of characters who are at that at that age. Mm -hmm. It's a treat because like the the experts on the set are probably your kids coming in to, to talk, you know, instead of having like real experts and stuff like this would be the experts at age group, you know, like, what are you into? <laughs> what do you like? All that sort of stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, there were so many experts at every at every stage. Um, yeah. I mean, like, as we were developing the script, you know, um, my producing partner, Jennifer Dana and our casting director, Avi Kaufman, I mean, we're the some of the first people to read it. And then the bulk of our department heads are, are female as well. And um they were all, as well as like dozens and dozens of friends who the script was being shared with at every stage where essentially the question was, what feels authentic to your experience? What, what it was when you, your friendships at that age, what are authentic to your experience as a mother now, you know, single mother, married mother, whatever it is, anything, what feels authentic? And, and then with the cast, with the younger actors, as well as the four actors that played their mothers, um, who all have very strong perspectives on those characters and 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 what it is to be a daughter or a mother or a friendship, all those things, all of them, you know, the script was a living, breathing document where there was an invitation to, how would you say it? What would you do? Like, look, put your creative fingerprints on it. So it really was a lot of people um, that sort of became authorities on, 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 you know, the characters. And it, most especially these, 
these young kids who sort of came to set with their parents, you know, um, uh -huh. and their, their parents had perspectives on what kids and the way kids and parents talk, because, I mean, we've all been a kid. We've all had parents like these. That's what the movie's about. And um, so much of it is uh, echoing you know, those conversations. And it's crazy. I mean, like, yeah, no one household is the same. You know, there's so many different perspectives and different family dynamics. So it's never the same, even though the kids are like, you know, very bonded together, but where they come from, it's all different. And in, in, in the movie and in regular life too, you know, in that way, it, it's, it's a, it's an interesting look too, because like when you grew up, I grew up, uh, you know, we didn't have like, Oh mom, you know, I'm going on TikTok or doing TikTok. Like, it's so crazy to see how kids have changed too. They become so much more digital age. You know, I remember I was probably like playing with action figures, you know, at that age and not being, you know, to the point like they're so like, I, I don't know, smarter, but more aware of the world and kind of what's surrounding him to these days. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, I think we as an audience, we need to experience multiple subjectivities, you know, so that we can understand things like the way that structural violence goes through society, um, you know, and, and subjectivity benefits all of us to try to live in the shoes of other people. And as audience members, as storytellers, there are blind spots that, that, <laughs> that, that we're going to have. But I mean, if we want to understand the world that we've created or the differences between different people and the world we've created for better or worse and not be stuck in it, we need to explore those stories. So, I mean, that, like what you're describing, it, it is like your experience, I think as a younger person was probably not dissimilar from mine where I, with my friends, yeah, we could not articulate the value of our friendships to each other. It was probably hard. We could talk about that other thing, that third thing, our right. favorite, our favorite team, our favorite, 10 favorite movies, our favorite bands, whatever it is for my sister, for my daughter, like they, for my wife, like their friendships, they could articulate in emotional earnest, maybe in a way that's so earnest that it can be uncomfortable for a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of men, I don't know, to like experience that, to hear people say, this friendship is meaningful to me because of this. And I love you for being in my life. I mean, I know plenty of people my own age um, who, I mean, I think I might be defining a version of toxic masculinity or just emotional <laughs> repression who can't speak in those terms because their parents couldn't speak in those terms around them. Um, and I think it's something we need to unpack and try to explore no doubt i think we're in a world now that's i think a little bit more open than it was when we kind of grew up you know more conversation more awareness about things it's, it's a different dynamic and it shows even in the youth you know from the youngest kids up that they understand things or aware of things that we would never think probably as kids or wouldn't even yeah cross our minds in a way too did yeah. you ever think about adding a boy to this dynamic or no was it always going to be girls and their mom sort of thing because uh, I wonder how, what would happen. There's like a one boy or two boys in, in, entered in this dynamic. It probably would have changed the movie and narrative and everything in that way, too. Yeah, I mean, you know, subjectivity was something we thought about a lot, about the endless movies that existed, say, when you and I were kids, where that was about boys and maybe someone has a sister, you know, where there's a yeah. marginalized female character or a crime movie, a film noir that where there's a dead young woman, but it's really not about her. It's about the male detective and what he's trying to figure out. And it really, you know, wanted to anchor it in a very intentional way in their experience and the relationship with their mothers and the male presence in it. They're men, they're just in the other rooms or they're a dead body or they're the absent father or at the end of the movie, they're the boys just riding by on bicycles who probably represent the future <laughs> in some way, um, but are not a part of this story. Yeah, in a central way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm curious about the, the the dead man aspect of it. Did it serve as a vessel for these characters in a sense? Because like we don't get in the sense a finality to that character. We get a little bit of a backstory as the girls are looking for it. But did you did you have that as sort of like that part of the film, that character in a sense as a vessel for them moving forward, or is there more to it that we don't know? And maybe in a sequel or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's a character. One of our four main characters says early on in the film when they're next to that body that in all of the cop shows, I think she says, or police shows that she's seen or that are playing in the background, mm -hmm. there's always a male detective, you know, trying to like save someone or figure out like who killed them or whatever. But really it's, it's never about them. It's never about their story, you know, um, mm -hmm. about the story of the person who's been treated as a object or a prop or robbed of their like humanity. This was an opportunity, I think, and, and, and the desire, yeah, in some ways, like that body, that man is a catalyst um, for, for these four, four young people 
who when we first meet them are most what their their chief fear is losing each other is a fear of change um which is probably more real um at that point than the fear of death until it's not and death and change you know i mean death is the ultimate change um no so it is about that that collision and, and the collision of stakes you know that when you're older it's very easy as an old when we're older to feel like well there's real worlds and the real problems in the world who cares if some kid is afraid of like losing their best friends but again when you're 11 or 12 like it everything is new like wow. losing your best friend is new and losing losing a grandparent or maybe your parents marriage not working out it feels huge to you yeah. so those um stakes that can feel small or large from an outside perspective or an older perspective the film really wanted to contain a collision of those life or death stakes for kids you know in a lot of cases, like the biggest thing going on in the world you know and in this yeah. case they get to share it together which is kind of neat that you don't have yeah. to you know contain it in any in inside too that kind of shows that you know that sisterhood in the sense of these characters share too yeah. you're I've, I've been a longtime fan of yours and your career mm -hmm. it's interesting because you've done so many different different types of work like we mentioned earlier um you know the spectacular now which is like a sense of love story with like teenagers and that now you go with kids you had a sci-fi movie in the circle it, in a sense like when you look back at things you've done um and you think that you're that you do differently in your career because you know it, it's interesting how you you know you you went from spectacular now and, and done smashed also too and then circle didn't maybe turn out as the way you wanted or, or the reception was uh, how do you kind of look back so far in your career um you know to this point and i know there's a lot more ahead for you too which is great because i'm a fan of your work yeah i mean you know i think i'm always just trying to live fully in whatever i'm creating and trying to make things that i really care about like that are anchored in characters who aren't abstract to me they're like real characters that are me or a version of me or my kids or friends or whatever it is who are wrestling with the things I'm wrestling with. And, um, you know, I'm always trying to, I think, make new things. I mean, like right now I'm just wrapping up a new, a new TV series that we've been filming for several months um, that will probably be out next year, but it's about a totally different thing. It's about, it's an Apple series. It's about therapists. It's called shrinking. It's about therapists shrinks. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about trauma and recovery and, um, and about grief and hope and love and laughter. And, um, and so, I mean, that's kind of creatively where my head is right now. And when it's done, I'll kind of just keep moving forward, I think, and just keep trying to pursue stories and characters that have a lot of heart and meaning for me. Mm -hmm. And I like that about you. You know, you, you've done that. That's exactly what you've done. You kind of had interesting character studies and different types of people and age groups, too. I, I feel like from every movie, you can pick that uh, away from that, you know, and I, I'm glad that, you know, Sometimes when a movie, a big movie, like let's say First Circle doesn't commercially do well, or it doesn't get the right critics reviews, it can hinder directors, but you've continued to do that. You continue to to go by your beliefs and, and I'm glad that you're still doing stuff and it didn't backtrack you or, or kind of like rattle you in any sense to do something different. Um, and, and that's what I really appreciate about your work and seeing a movie like this and whatever's got coming forward for you. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, I guess I'll end on this. Any summer plans for you? I know you seem busy from what I saw on your IMDb, but uh, are you doing anything after now that you're done kind of finished promoting uh, any lasting summer plans or maybe you had a good, nice vacation? I mean, I'm filming now. I'm filming the finale of Shrinking right now. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I'll be tomorrow and Thursday. I'll be, I'll be on set with um, Jessica Williams and Jason Siegel and the rest of the cast finishing up this show that we care about a lot. I'll just be making things. And my kids start school this week. Um, so, so early. All right. It seems so earlier, early. earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I mean, the, the plans are keep making things and be a good parent and good partner to my wife. <laughs> there you go. The um, simple things that matter in life that are going to, you know, I mean the most, right. Keep yeah, your yeah. home uh, as a focus, right. And all good things will come out of it. Yeah. James, uh, like I said, been a big fan of your work. Glad to Thank finally you. catch up with you and talk to you. Uh, I enjoy your work and I'm glad you're you're doing interesting stories that make you think. You know, it's always the best to see a movie where you kind of explore your own, how you do it in your life and makes you think about life in, in a lot of different aspects. And I think you've accomplished that. Oh, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Talk to you on the next one. I know there's a lot coming, so. I'll look forward to it. <laughs> Absolutely. Take and I got to get a neon sign, too. Yes, I gotta get a neon it. sign. <laughs> Definitely. Right. You know, just your name on it or whatever project on it, you know. Cool. I'll put my kid's name on it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You see more, more, more points at home. So there you kids will love it. <laughs> cool.
All right. Take care, James. Thanks.